My name is Cora. My name is Nier. And you're watching Anime TV. <laughs> Welcome back to another special episode of Anime TV. We are now on episode five. That means five times the fun, five times the action, five times the obscenities, five times the editing. It's going to be fun. There's so much anime out there, it's almost impossible for you to be able to scroll through. I mean, we've got, what, Verve, Funimation, Crunchyroll, whatever's on Hulu, Netflix, Originals. It's hard to choose. That's why we're here. We're here to help you pick. We're here to help you decide. And if you don't like what we like, well, that, that's fair. That's opinion. You can like whatever you like. It's okay. No one listens to me anyway. So, until then, let's watch some anime. So, high school. It's a very uh, important part in most of our lives. Everybody had to go at some point. It's usually four years. Sometimes it's three years. Sometimes you're special and you only have to go for a year. Sometimes you're Jason and you go for eight years. Really just kind of depends on who you are. It's a little special thing that we like to call. But in most high school animes, there's one thing in common. It's a one common trend. It's quite popular. Studying. It's all about studying. You got to get those good grades. You got to buckle down. No more listening about love. That stuff just gets in the way. And that's the topic of this week's anime, the quintessential quintuplets. Man, I went into this one a while back. I have seen this before. I went into it not knowing what it was. All I heard was the name. I heard a lot of good things on it, and I, I, I loved it. I loved it a lot. It's one of those things where I still read it. Like, I'm cut up. <laughs> <laughs> it comes out every Tuesday now. Uh, so it's only got one season right now. It's been both dubbed and subbed. It's on, you can find it on Funimation. It's ridiculous how popular it is. Yeah, it's a popular one. My poor brain, under heavy duress and overclocked past its manufacturer limit, reached the only logical conclusion that it could possibly muster. A dream. It, it all centers around the fact that you have Uesugi, who is just a no-nonsense type of guy. He's all about studying, wants to get the best grades. Funny enough, we are so many chapters in because it starts off on their uh, first year of high school and right now i think we're on their third year in the manga and i still don't know what he wants to do when he grows up i just know he's really obsessed with studying so <laughs> but he's in a lot of debt thanks to his dad and most of the people in the studio i mean god toy hunting is not cheap i tell you that much right now but it all came down to studying so uesugi is here to Continue to learn well, and when he kind of runs into a girl named Itsuki while he's inside of the cafeteria eating his fantastic lunch of rice and soup and water. One barbecue combo, and hold the barbecue. Coming up. You'd think the cheapest thing on the cafeteria menu would be rice, but it's not. You save 200 yen if you skip the beef in the combo. It's rice, soup, and veggies for the same cost as just rice. And the water's free. I love this place. Water Street. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that. So it was one of those things that I went into and it was kind of just there. It was like, okay, I get the premise. We're going to kind of go into studying. And by the title, I obviously knew that there were five sisters. They were quintuplets. Yeah. It's kind of, it's hard to miss. But the introductions of them all was interesting to me. It was one of those things where, you know, you first meet one and he kind of insults her by saying that she's going to get fat. <laughs> because of the amount of stuff she orders. And then another one kind of shows up and tries to act like the big sister. And then one other one's ditzy, one of them's quiet. They all have different personalities, which um, I actually have three sisters. 
and two of them are twins and they are the exact opposites of each other. So the same concept could be said for the quintuplets, but they, uh, and they never once go into saying that they all like the same thing. It's clear that they like different things. And while none of them technically look alike because of the way that their hair is done, I can see in the manga, it's a little harder to tell them apart be- unless you're paying attention to their hair. So I actually really liked this one because it's, it didn't start off as a romance. It started off as just something like a little high school trying to get to know people. Yeah. I have a meeting with my tutor in a few minutes, so if you could please leave already. That'd be me. What? Your new tutor? It's me. Ah! Goodness. I I didn't like it that much, but this also, like like I'd mentioned before, this doesn't fall into the vein of stuff I usually find interesting with anime. It wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. It just, I did my three episode give it, and I was like, I I don't have a love for the ca- like I liked the characters fine but I also found myself like I don't really care where this goes because I know there's going to be a lot of teasing with a lot of stuff everywhere. Yes. And also the second episode had more than one epi- one instance of we're just going to do some fan service now. Eve. Huh? You're after Itsuki, aren't you? Mm-hmm. I'm not after her. Oh, so she is the one that you like. (laughs) So what is it about her you're attracted to? Let me guess. It's her serious side. So they don't actually do a whole lot of fan service throughout the series. There's a few moments in the beginning where it's kind of there, but based off of the history of where the manga goes, it's this is a rom-com that's appealed more towards guys is what it is because most rom-coms are kind of appealing to both but we can we can just kind of say that most of them generally appeal to like women because generally in most rom-coms you follow the female character as she tries to find love or in some cases it is the male character trying to find love it's one of those things where those kind of rom-coms generally just kind of are there they're there to be more of a harem this one never takes that route um the only people that actually fall in love with him are obviously all five of the sisters, but they make it very clear in the first episode he's only going to pick one, which is very good because he could take a completely different route if it wanted to. But they establish exactly where it's going to be, episode one. And I mean, like, the first five minutes, it tells you right off the bat. Yeah, like it, it does tell you off the bat he's going to pick one of them. Mm-hmm. And they obscure her enough that you can't tell which it is because they, they all have the same body type and they all have the same face and eyes. But they don't have the same hair and they obscured enough that you can tell that she has red hair, but they all have red hair. They all and they tell you that like later on that all of the different color hair colors that they have are dyed. They specifically dyed them differently. I think it's Nino. She's the the one that hates him the most. She's the one that actually has their natural hair color. And they say that that specifically in the manga, they didn't do anything to change the hair. The Yeah. So it didn't matter who it was, but in the anime, they just kind of picked a color and said, you know what, when they're at this age, someone's just going to let their hair go back to the normal color and that's what's going to be. So you still don't know who it is. And they do a lot of teasing of that moment throughout most of the series. Like they'll try to tease who it is possibly like, cause everybody doesn't, no one knows who's going to win. We're at that point. I mean, with these kind of anime, I'm, I legit think the first girl he meets is going to be the one that he gets with. Cause that, that's how these sorts of harem animes or shoujo animes go whoever he meets first even if he didn't technically meet her first whoever he ran into first and we see that first meeting that's usually who he ends up this was kyoto so it must have been from our school trip five years huh the colors fading a little this takes me back so that's what's actually funny about this series. And this is technically a spoiler. So spoiler alert through some of this one. Uh, there's an episode later down uh, later down the road in the first season. Uh, he kind of talks about it in the first one that he's got a photo inside of his pocketbook. And that photo is a picture of him younger with blonde hair, looking like a rebel. And inside is with him and a girl. And it's his first love. He just doesn't know who it is. And then they pull out a photo album and it turns out that it could have been that it is one of the the quintuplets that you just don't know which one because all of the quintuplets look the same at that age. They all wore the same outfit. They all had the same color hair. They all had the same length of hair. So that was like the biggest mystery throughout most of it was who was the one that he met first. So in the anime right now, the first person he met, not knowing that one of them was the, the youngest one, he meets Iski first. 
who is the one that likes to eat a lot. She's got the stars in her hair. She's red. She's just that type of girl. She's both cares and hates him at the same time. She flip flops so much. It's ridiculous. Can I take a look? Uh, hey! Let's see, Mr. Futaro Uesugi. You scored a... Uh, a hundred? Is this real? Oh no, I'm so embarrassed! You wanted me to see it! She's soon. Yeah, but Nino is the true, the, the true, like, bully, Sunder. I don't know how to pronounce it. But that's the one, but ironically, she's the first one to admit that she loves him in the manga. But she likes pancakes. Okay, the porridge is ready now. Oh, is that whole rice? Each individual grain is sparkling. They really do buy the good stuff here, huh? She does like pancakes. She likes cooking. Did you just look that up? Well, I can get me the cliff notes on it because I did not watch this one. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Jason the editor. <laughs> yeah, so it's one of those things where he meets one of them and that's the biggest like mystery throughout is which one's the one he met. Uh, because you're right, it could be the person that he met first. So that was the big thing is if <laughs> you can look up on Reddit and everything with the, with the way the fandom is. Everyone is divided by who they want to win. So you're either Miku, Ichika, Nino, Itsuki or Yotsuba. I personally love Yotsuba. She's just quirky. She's got <laughs> she's got the ribbon. She's just one of those uh, type of girls. But it didn't start off the way I liked Yotsuba. I liked Miku first, and then the more I read into the manga, like it just keeps alternating between which one I like most. And at this point, I'm just like, I don't care who he ends up with. You just got to end up with one of them. And in the manga, I think we're close to him picking. But we just still don't know because you'll get to a point where one of them will seem like, oh, she's out of the game. She's not going to be the one that wins. And then he'll find a way to bring her back in the game. And I don't know how. But it, it's one of those types of series that even I find a lot of harems very annoying. Um, not in like the storytelling. I just can't. I just don't care when you keep introducing someone new and new and new. There's a there's a popular rom-com harem going, called uh, We Never Learn which is the same premise. It's about, you know, people tutoring and then all the girls who he's tutoring all fall in love with them at the same time. So who is he going to end up with? But then they keep introducing new girls into the mix. And that's annoying. At least with this one, they introduce five. They're like, okay, here's, here's the five sisters. It's going to be one of them. That's all you need to know. And then they just kind of roll with it. But they, they don't focus on a lot of the romance throughout most of the series. It actually becomes more of like an evolving take. So all of the girls, while opposed to studying, he kind of helps them find their path down the line. And he goes from being made fun of in episode one to a, there's a beach episode that doesn't involve any of the girls and not in the not an episode a chapter in the manga that doesn't involve any of them. And all of the classmates hang out with them because they all like him now because they've made him more appealing to them. So it actually is decent in helping them grow. It's just the story of getting up to there. And then after they all kind of like them at the same time, it's just like, okay, well, now they all like them. So how are they going to do stuff? But none of them, like, there's a point later on where they try to step over each other, but they still keep that familial bond there. So it's one of the, it's different than most of them. But you're, you're right. They had some fan service moments in the beginning. They had an entire episode with Nino in a bat towel. Yeah, that, and like, they made it work. But as that episode went on, it's like, I get that this is not aimed at me. Mm -hmm. This is aimed at a male audience. Which it was. But as a female trying to watch it, I I didn't appreciate it. Just be, like, I get annoyed to a point when the fan service is that blatant in a show. And it and it doesn't matter if it's a female or a male. And it feels like they hand yeah. like like it they handle it better. I'm gonna put that in air quotes. When it's males, because it's usually just them standing there shirtless with like little sparkles. And that's like as far as they tend to take it. I will say that while well, it doesn't happen in this one, because they never do any, they don't take some of the fan service too far. Um, there there are some animes where they'll do the fan service with the girl is just completely undressed. And the only thing that's stopping them is like conveniently placed hair or stuff like that. Um, there are some animes out there that make fun of that where I, I don't remember which one it was, but there was a clip I had saw where it was like, it doesn't matter if I'm undressed because look, this convenient light follows me everywhere and it pokes fun of that stuff. 
but in this one it doesn't really do that the the thing that was weird about some of the i guess you could say the fan service moments is it seemed like the anime wanted you to feel like there was more than there actually was going to be because there's not in the actual like manga and the, later on in the anime there really isn't a whole lot of fan service that goes with it there's just that one moment like in the opening the song i think is great but in the opening animation, it has them twice without shirts. Yeah. Which doesn't make sense because, one, those scenes never happen. That's not something that actually comes up. It was just one of those things where I guess it's trying harder to pull in that male audience. But those scenes never happen. And they never get close to that happening. There's one scene in the manga where they all go to a like a bathhouse. But it's legitimately broken up like female mix and male. Like you got to choose because those exist. And even then, it doesn't go that far. It's just It just seemed weird. And that part threw me off, but I just kind of usually skip through the intro song at that point anyway, whenever I'm watching it, because generally what's happening in the story, I find adorable. But yeah, like the episode where she's in her bath towel, I understand what they were going for. And in the manga, it also, they did the same thing where they were kind of putting everybody on trial. And it was just one of those things where most most series in the beginning are just trying to find hooks to catch you in. And then they kind of let all that go because right now there's no fan service in any of the manga. It's like cosplay girl patrons. I know. Want to find out if girls really do wear yukata with no undies? That's not the norm anymore. Don't bother. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> well, like the, the part about that that made it completely unbelievable for me was he has black hair and she's mistaking him for some one of her sisters. As someone who has to wear glasses because they have extremely bad eyesight, if I take my glasses off, I can still tell that you're not my sister. A, because you don't have the same figure as her. And B, because she has blonde hair and you don't. <laughs> like I, I get it, yeah. It... Th that, that bothered me a little bit because it's like, you can't tell. And you're standing, your boobs are literally pressed against his back and you can't tell that this is not your sister. See, when it comes to some animes, I have to extend my disbelief. And I've had this discussion before when it comes to certain fan services. Is I just, if, if it's there, it's there. It, it's one of those things where I don't care. I think certain fan services in certain moments actually still appeals to a plot. I, I don't care if it's, even if it doesn't make sense. But there's a difference in line. And the reason why I don't mind with this one is because one, you're, you're right. I, I had to extend my disbelief past that point because none of the girls have black hair like he does and i was like god she has to have really bad eyesight and they don't really bring that up again even in the manga so it was one of those things where that was just clearly a hook to get somebody in and that's not one of my favorite episodes by any means um yeah. and it has nothing to do with the fan service part it's just i don't like that way that that episode goes because it's the fact of even at the end of it nino still hates him it's just one of those things where i guess it was supposed to give us more about nino but there are better episodes to get more about nino yeah, they, they re like, and that was the last episode I watched because it's episode three. Mm -hmm. And that was actually the point where I'm like, okay, no. So, but it, like but the next episode about Nino is actually better and it's the next episode. Um, they go out to a, a festival where all the girls are wearing the kimonos and stuff like that. And Nino reveals that there's a tradition that they always do where they always go and watch the fireworks together because that's what their mom did when they were younger and they like to keep that up. Well, it's just, our mom really loved seeing them. We've always watched the fireworks together every year. Even now that she's not here. It's one of the most important memories we have of her. So Nino entrusts Futuro to go and find all the rest of the girls, because they all got split up. It happens. It was a busy festival. They got split up. Nobody knew where anyone was. So Futuro says that he's going to go and help her out. And it was the first time Nino kind of opened up to him. And even at the end of that episode, while she still doesn't like him, she still thanks him at the end, even though he completely fails. Because that episode became more Ichika-centric, because it goes into the fact that Ichika has a, uh, has a part-time job, and she's trying to become an actress. So it's one of those things where, like, there are other episodes beyond that point, if you want to know more about Nino, other than that episode. Like, that one I could tell was just, like, a hook-in for the manga and a hook-in for the anime. And I even I don't like that one. Again, it has nothing to do with the fan service. I just, I just think there's better arcs to that. Um, but I will say that in the manga, there's an interesting topic that they kind of cover that you can't see in the anime. 
every arc that revolves around the same area alternates from a girl's viewpoint because you look following that girl and you get to see that person's side. It's not like it intertwines. It's not like you're watching the same thing over and over again, but it's an arc centered around one of the girls and it's always in that pattern. So it's like, okay, we do Ichika, then Nino, then Miku, then Yotsuba, then Itsuki. And they do it because of based on their age, because that's what they are from oldest to youngest. So I always thought that was really like, interesting in the way that they went about it, but it just shows better in the manga than it does in the anime. But I mean, the visuals in the anime were always great. Like they, they pop, they stand out. The girls did really well, both dubbed and subbed. I like both of them. Uh, I watched this one dubbed mainly because that's just the way I went for it. I, uh, I was watching it dubbed because it came out on Funimation and the, the voice acting's great. They do a good job. You have Josh Greel who plays Futuro, who plays uh, Tokuyami in My Hero Academia. He's the bird one. So <laughs> he plays the main character there. And then each one of the girls are all differently. But there, there's something interesting about each of them. Like the opening song is sung by the original Japanese voice actresses for them. Yeah. Which is Ooh. pretty interesting. Like each one has their own part. It alternates. It's pretty interesting. Uh, it's a decent song. I think it's called Quintuplet Feelings is what it is. But like this is surprisingly a huge anime and it's because i think of the different takes it takes on being a rom-com um we talked about this in gamers where some things just get really annoying like in gamers it was a bunch of miscommunication that could just be resolved by talking in this one they do that if something gets miscommunicated they find a way to talk about it to each other even if it involves yelling because let's face it if you're having an argument some people you know you get your heat going you get a little angry some people start to yell, but by the end of it, they've always finished communicating to one each other, which is what I liked. There's no real mix up unless they're intending to mix somebody up. Like there's an arc uh, where they're intentionally trying to mess with him and trying to see if, because as their friendship evolves into kind of romance, they're trying to see if he can tell them apart, even when he doesn't notice their hair. Because at some point he's just like, all their hair is different. That's how I know they're apart. So they all dress the same. But they do it for a different reason. It's not to just mess with him. It's because at that time, their grandfather likes when they all look the same. But he could tell them all apart, even though they all look the same. So they kind of test them like that. Yeah, so they'll all dress up as Itsuki because... The, yeah, so like the grandfather doesn't accept change because he likes... He felt better when they were all getting together, when they all got along. They all basically act the same. It's one of those things. So they all dress the same, but that also puts a test to Futuro, who's like, okay, well, now I have to figure out who's who without knowing who's who. So, like, it's one of those things where it evolves, and in that arc, he does actually figure out one of them without knowing who it is, which is, like, a step forward. But like I said, it's it's always keeping you on your toes on who's going to win, and at this point, everybody just likes who they are, and even in the in the, in the manga, they're like, Look, if I lose, I lose, but I'll support you because you're my sister because that's just the way it works. We're family. Yeah. So I like this one better than most of the other rom-coms. And like I said, I actually keep up with this one because it actually has a decent story to tell. Because now it's focused more in the rom-com area. They're actually all passing their school studies at this point of where we are. We're kind of getting to the end game in there. And they eventually reveal who is the the younger one that he meets. And you know that one, that one bothered me for a while. I had to know. They called it lowly. They were like, who's the lowly not going to I don't like that term. They just did it based off of the fact that it was a child, but nobody could figure out who it was because they all look the same and they all acted the same and they did a whole arc on it. They eventually reveal who it is and man, they, they had twists and turns along the entire way because then one of them dressed up so that would look like an older version of what that younger version would look like, but then it's, they're all red herrings and it's the worst. But by this point, I enjoyed. I enjoyed it. Run for your life! Oh, we're gonna eat eyeballs. Futaro, Yotsuba's here too. Oh, it's just you. That was a waste of time. <laughs> you already know the whole gimmick. Eek! You scared me. I think the I think the soundtrack's great. I think the voice acting's great. I think the song is great. Not all episodes are great. It's just one of those things where it doesn't matter what series you like, not every episode is going to draw you in the same way as we talked about with the Nino one. Yeah. It's just once you move past certain episodes, because even then, I think I skipped that episode the first time and I still went to the other ones because there's better Nino arcs. You just have to get there. I don't know. I've been like reading through. So I guess I'm not, I have not had the visual of this anime yet. 
but I'm still not drawn in just yet. It, it's one of those that, just like anybody else, it either grabs you or it doesn't. Um, it had a very successful run with its first anime. It actually just got announced for a second season. Which I is, see the manga's ongoing still as well. Yeah, it is still ongoing. Um, I read it online every Tuesday when it comes out. It's just one of those things where I think that it's it's a good series overall, but I can see why people don't like it. Like, I can see both points. I just happen to like it more than some. I mean, <laughs> overall, I think it's a good series to at least check out. Um, like I said, it is more male audience prone. That, that's where it's going. But I, I think that it does it in a decent way for most male audiences. To, if you're trying to get into rom-coms, like I said, I like watching rom-coms because they're generally more simple. It's one of those things where you're just kind of like, oh, look at that. Isn't that sweet? Or general. Because like with Miku, she's really quiet and timid. So you go from being like, okay, normally that's the type of person I wouldn't talk to, but then she's super sweet and adorable behind the scenes. Huh? Uh, huh? Whoa. What I do now? Everything's fine. Never mind. So watching each one of them progress was really great. It was just, and it was different to know that I already know who the girls are that are going to be in the harem, quote unquote without actually knowing that a harem is ever going to show up. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, I think it's worth checking out. I think it's worth checking out. Just go, just understand when going into it that it may not be your thing, but since they, they have it available in multiple places online, you'll be able to check it out no matter what your subscription is. And if you like it, you can continue watching it. And if not, you didn't really waste much of your time. Yeah, it's going to appeal to some, it's going to not appeal to others. And that's, that's kind of one of the whole points of this show is we have different opinions. I don't think there's really been an anime that we've all landed on that we all loved in the same capacity <laughs> other than like maybe Cromartie. And even then I haven't gone back and watched it. <laughs> it's, we, we all kind of have different viewpoints on the show, but that kind of appeals to if you can kind of see the topics and trends that we like. So if you don't like rom-com stuff, then this is not the one to look at. No. No. But, I mean, that's why I think it's worth checking out. It's because I like you. Fooled you. Ah! I was just yanking your chain! That's what you get for thinking I can't lie! <laughs> I will never trust again. And so, on that day, Futaro's already hardened heart grew a little colder. Uh... Normally, we would do a fan review, but we're kind of skipping that these times around. We might pick them up later on as we go. It's just one of those things where not enough fan reviews are coming in at the time, and that's fine. It's still a new show. Um, plus, I have new ideas for how to bring fan reviews kind of to the forefront, but that's going to have to wait until we get the site up and running. Uh, currently, the Quintessential Quintuplets, though, is licensed by Crunchyroll and Funimation, so you can find them on both apps, both dubbed and subbed. So please go support the official release. Since this is the month of October, this one will be a horror-themed anime. Quote, unquote. Oh, Quote, unquote. Mind. And... Please be Elven Line. No, Elven, <laughs> Elven, Elven, Elven Line will, will not be... Will ever, never be reviewed on this show. Will never be reviewed because we can't show it. Because we don't want to be sad. <laughs> oh, my God. I quit. <laughs> And uh, we have drawn my absolute favorite anime of all time, Yu Yu Hakusho. You know, now I, we can. I own the first season of this, and I've never actually watched it. Are you serious? We... Okay, like Puff Daddy, I'm shutting the studio down. <laughs> no, I understand. If, if y'all don't want to do that, we can draw again. No, no, no. No, it's fine. I, it's I own the first season. I've never actually gotten to watching it. It's fine. Okay. It's a classic. It is a good it is a good one. I can even participate. Yes, please. And it gives me an excuse to actually rewatch it because I haven't watched it again in a while. Like I said I bought that first season on iTunes for five dollars, so I just never got around to watching it. So we'll be back in two weeks. We'll be watching Yu Yu Hockey Show. We'll see you then. Jason, come coming. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, that sounded worse than you like.